You know, I grew up in this country, was educated in this country, went to uni, um, worked all my life, set up businesses. I mean, I was working two or three jobs at many times. We lived on acreage. Food insecurity is something, it lives in our communities and you may not even know it. It's an ever increasing issue in this country and yet so many people would be unaware of it. It's easy to hide. Three years ago, from the outside looking in, Paula Zrilik's life appeared to be nothing out of the ordinary. Little did anyone know, behind closed doors, her world was crumbling around her. For two decades, she was a victim of domestic violence, suffering in silence and fearful that if she ever left her abusive relationship, she wouldn't be able to provide for her three young daughters. Take us back to when you were in a, in a situation where you essentially had to escape with your children. Yeah, you know, I was living in a very unhealthy marriage, um, deeply scarred, it was fraught with deep domestic violence. And I knew there was two things that kept me stuck there, was where am I gonna go and how am I gonna afford it? Your ex-husband had complete control. Oh, absolutely. I actually remember a few months before I left, he made me go with him to the bank. I had to sign everything over in his name. And I still remember that lady's face looking at me saying, are you sure you wanna do this? She probably saw something in me, but she didn't feel the, the immense fear. I was like, please don't ask me that question because he's sitting there and I know what's going to happen when I go home. Because, of course, it wasn't just about you. There were three daughters' lives yes. at risk as well. Absolutely. But for about two years before I left, they were actually saying to me, Mum, why are we here? Why are you staying stuck? Why are we here? Why do you put up with this? So you managed to escape. You had no money, very little resources. Yeah. And three mouths, to, well, four oh. mouths to feed. Um, it was tough. You, there was many nights where the kids would eat my portion of them. So we literally had $5 a day to feed the kids. That was all Five dollars between four people? Yeah. You just say, I just had a late lunch, I'm not hungry. You manage, you know, you get very resourceful. You learn quickly where you could buy something that's a bulk item that runs over. You get very reliant on pasta and two minute noodles, obviously. I'd get paid on a Thursday and every cent was pretty much gone by Thursday night. Paula's story is not unusual. A growing number of vulnerable people are struggling to put food on the table. But one not-for-profit organisation is tackling food insecurity head on. For people who aren't familiar with Food Bank, explain what you do. We do enormous food relief in this country. We've got four million Australians who at some point throughout the year don't know where their next meal is coming from. And we pride ourselves in the ability to get food and groceries to those vulnerable families. And uh, I think what's really concerning me at the moment is the number of families that we're seeing fleeing domestic violence and the needs that they have. The food is primarily donated by farmers, manufacturers and retailers, and it's distributed by thousands of charities. I mean, there are just pallets and pallets of perfectly good um, produce. Here's an example, SBC I mean, diced fruit. Yeah, yeah. And I think what these brands are really understanding now is food insecurity isn't just something that's experienced by homeless people living on the streets. This is something that's experienced by people living on your street and mine. It is everyday working Australians who have fallen on tough times for whatever reason. The world is producing more food than ever. Yet we have a global hunger and wastage crisis. And we in Australia are some of the biggest contributors, with $20 billion worth of food going into our bins every year. Bananas are a prime example. They actually go out to the growers markets each and every morning to make sure that we can get products like these, to make sure that they don't go to landfill. How did you find out about Food Bank? Where I was working, actually they had a food relief program they were aligned with and I got given a box of six things. There was pasta, two minute noodles, pasta sauce and a loaf of bread and fabulous. But my middle daughter's celiac so she couldn't eat any of those contents. And she told me to go home and sort out my picky eater and I just remember that moment. That was, that was the hardest moment. You can go hungry but when you can't, you can't help your kids. That comment is, as judgmental and dispiriting as it was, it was also a major turning point because it led to you starting up Community yeah. Pantry. Yeah, Community Pantry, I love our Community Pantry. We provide everything, I mean, through Food Bank, we're so lucky we can access everything from bread, milk, dairy items, through to dog and cat food. Motivated by her own experience, Paula travels across New South Wales three times a week, picking up groceries from Food Bank and delivering them to those in need you know firsthand what it's doing for someone. So it just, it drives you because you know we're serving. You know, it's, it's taken something from a dark day and it's just become something so much bigger. You're a woman on a mission. Yeah, yeah, maybe.